The staff of one of Britain's most iconic places, Buckingham Palace, is overflowing as they struggle to keep the monarch happy and the building running properly. Those workers are now at the beck and call of King Charles. His dedicated staff provides him with a lot of assistance while he governs the United Kingdom. The fact that this regal king requires a little extra help to keep things running smoothly is not surprising. But some of these tasks are bizarre. But how crazy can they be? How absurd are they? Well, in today's video, we'll look at some of the most absurd tasks King Charles has his people do. Some of these jobs might shock you at some level of how ridiculous they are. Let's see exactly what they are, shall we? Picky Eater King Charles is reputed to be a picky eater with specific dietary preferences. Expresso.co.uk researched the foods the new king frequently eats and those he won't touch. Even though royalty can generally eat whatever they want, picky eaters exist among them. One dish is never prepared in the royal kitchen during King Charles III's reign. According to Daily Express, Andrew Farquharson, deputy master of the household at Clarence House, stated that chefs were not permitted to buy or serve foie gras. Foie gras is the name for a duck's or goose's expanded liver, and it is a delicacy. Although King Charles III finds it disgusting, many people disagree because of concerns about animal rights. A royal source informed the magazine that the king would only eat cookies that had been pre-warmed to a specific temperature. Even more strange, the insider disclosed how the former Prince of Wales staff caters to his eating preferences. The crew keeps a warming pan solely to ensure his food is hot enough for pleasure. According to former royal chef Darren McGrady, King Charles likes wild mushrooms and would take his chefs to Balmoral to show them where the best mushrooms are. And on the other side, King Charles hates coffee. He adores drinking tea instead and has extremely particular tastes, just like other royal family members. Various sweeteners are reportedly added to King Charles's tea, and there are regulations for each variety of tea he drinks. Even the arrangement of the spoon and teacup handle is highly specific. Horological Conservators The royal family wishes to adhere to long-standing traditions. As a result, the monarch of the United Kingdom has appointed royal horological conservators responsible for maintaining and adjusting the royal clocks. According to a previous post looking to fill the role, a royal horological conservator is required to maintain, set, and fix more than 1,000 clocks found at Buckingham Palace and other royal palaces. To maintain these centuries-old clocks, the royal worker will also need to be knowledgeable about the history and mechanically proficient. While the profession sounds pretty strange, it certainly requires attention to detail. Interestingly, the Royal Horological Conservator's pay was $50,163 at the job posting in 2013. It's obviously more than that at the current time. The worker also needs to use their knowledge to advise and guide on maintaining and preserving the clocks. Morning Routine It's not unusual for someone to have preferences. But King Charles III's odd habits and eating preferences also apply to his daily morning routine. Staff at Clarence House, where Charles and his wife Camilla resided from 2003 until his recent succession to the throne, have long referred to him as the Pampered Prince, a moniker that accurately sums up the monarch's opulent lifestyle. The butler for Queen Elizabeth and Princess Diana, Paul Burrell, disclosed the specific instructions given to the servants to look after the king. Burrell says that every morning, his pajamas are ironed and his shoelaces are flattened. But even if it seems like a lot of preparation, King Charles III needs more than just that every morning. Although it may sound extremely immigrant-like, Charles allegedly receives daily dressing assistance. Interestingly, the current king, according to Burrell, has his attendants dispense the perfect quantity of toothpaste for him from the tube. Burrell stated, Every morning, Charles has his valets squeeze an inch of toothpaste onto his toothbrush. 
In the Amazon Prime video serving the royals, inside the firm, Burel said that the prince calls people from other rooms to fetch objects that fall out of his reach rather than picking them up himself. Carving meat. If you work for the king, there are many peculiar occupations and roles that you can take on. However, as Express pointed out, the king has one peculiar profession that cannot be sought. The role of Grand Carver has a distinctive and lengthy history. The Grand Carver's sole responsibility is to slice the meat to perfection and deliver it to his majesty and the other members of the royal family. A monarch is never allowed to cut their meat. So, even if the position isn't very well known today, it used to be quite important. While most individuals would not think it's a huge deal, English chef and restaurateur Mark Hicks claimed that the role had become a forgotten art in today's society. The source claimed that expert carvers provided uniformly shaped, thick slices of monarch meat that were still hot in the past. Even so, those interested in the job shouldn't bother applying as the work is exclusive to one special family and has been passed down from generation to generation since the 17th century. Astronomical Advice The Office of Astronomer Royal is one of several odd jobs held by the monarch, but it is also one of the most intriguing. With eminent figures like John Flamsteed and Edmund Haley holding the title, the Astronomer Royal is the most well-known and respected position in astronomy. Flamsteed was renowned for playing a significant influence in establishing the Royal Observatory and its standing as a crucial component of astronomy and timekeeping. A prominent astronomer given the honorary title of Astronomer Royal is supposed to advise the monarch on astronomical subjects. Today, the position is mostly ceremonial. The Astronomer Royal is a member of the royal household and earns an annual stipend of 100 pounds. As part of the establishment of the Royal Observatory, Charles III gave the Astronomer Royal the task of correcting the tables of heavenly motions and fixed star locations in order to determine locations' much desired longitudes for the advancement of navigational skill. John Flamsteed moved into the Tower of London during this time, where legend has it that he was frequently interrupted while performing his astronomical duties. Bagpipe Alarm Clock According to Hello, the alarm clock used by magazine The British Monarch is peculiar and puts digital clocks in disgrace. So what is this particular wake-up call all about? It is bagpipe music played by the Piper of the Sovereign, a member of the royal household with the unique responsibility of playing the bagpipes to awaken the UK's monarch. The Piper doesn't get any days off from his job. Every day for exactly 15 minutes, they must be prepared to perform their music in front of the monarch's window. Since 1843, when Queen Victoria originally established the position due to liking the sound of bagpipes in the Highlands, this special position has existed. The Sun said King Charles III named Pipe Major Paul Burns, who played as his personal piper at the Queen's burial. Burns became well known for his powerful performance of Sleep Deary Sleep after Queen Elizabeth II's official funeral. The source claims that Burns took up his new position in early October 2020. According to a source quoted in the article, they were happy to hear that the practice would continue after the announcement. They added that Burns' performance during his mother's funeral greatly impressed the king. Staff members on hand. While King Charles has been attempting to improve his image among the British populace in the days following Queen Elizabeth's passing, many of his staff members who worked for him while he was the Prince of Wales find his accession to the throne to be a less happy occasion. Long-term employees may be abruptly let go. One would assume that King Charles III's large staff would have no shortage of odd jobs, given his obvious taste for having things done in a certain manner. However, The Guardian reports that upon the death of Queen Elizabeth II, 
about 100 of King Charles' employees received notices that they would probably be let go. According to the source, several staff members have been employed by the royal family for many years. Those notified that their jobs were in jeopardy during the Thanksgiving ceremony for the Queen at St. Giles' Cathedral in Edinburgh included private secretaries, the finance office, the communications team, and home employees. Many employees claimed they were not informed of what was to come until the letter from Sir Clive Alderton, the king's top assistant, arrived and that they had thought they would be merged into the king's new household. Moreover, a spokeswoman for Clarence House said that while they were trying to locate new jobs for some of the employees, other terminations were simply unavoidable. Very unfortunate, or some say dreadful, behavior on behalf of long-serving staff members. Anyway, what are your thoughts about these ridiculous jobs King Charles makes his staff do? But considering how much some of them are being paid, should they complain? That's it for today's video. Don't forget to smash like and subscribe, guys. See you next time. Next time.